Good afternoon. This is a Northeast Ohio follow-up on Andrew Warren's presentation uh, on the state of the real estate industry across the country through the ULI National Emerging Trends uh, report. This is a local Northeast Ohio report that we prepared here at CSU, uh, working closely with the ULI Cleveland Emerging Trends Committee. Um, we, this was a true collaborative effort. My colleague, Aunt Alexandra Malkin, and I um, prepared the report, but we had tons of input and support from the committee. So I just want to thank all the committee members, especially Jack Newton with CBRE Research, who provided a lot of the slides you'll see here, and uh, the other members of the committee. It was really great the time you all put in um, to uh, provide feedback and help shape the report. As you'll see, the report is a little bit different approach than we took last year. Um, we recognize that there's a ton of data out there and we wanted to give you all a sense of what the data is saying and then use the annual fall ULI Cleveland online survey to, um, to corroborate that to help us understand the perceptions of folks in the industry in our area and how that relates to what the data is telling us. This is a really shortened version. I have, I think, about 10 slides here. Um, and uh, I encourage you all to look at the report itself. There's a lot more detail in there. And uh, it should be available, I understand, on the ULI Cleveland web website at some point in the near future. So what we're going to do here with our new approach is to um, talk about trends data in each of several areas and, and then also talk about the online survey results and how they relate. Um, the survey was done in the fall online. We had about 86 participants and we would really encourage any of you who are on the ULI Cleveland list when this survey link comes around again next year to participate. Uh, it really does provide good corroborating uh, information that helps us think more clearly and a little more deeply about the data that is in that we're developing as part of the report. So the first the first story here is that we've been, all been hearing a lot of stories around town about certain characteristics of the Northeast Ohio economy, especially Cleveland Cuyahoga County and how things might not be um, going as well as we would like. Uh, households are not growing, the, the number of households isn't growing, um, the job, uh, the total jobs and employment is um, growing just slightly and population is even decreasing still slightly. Those macro factors tell one story, but what we're finding when we look deeper in the data is that there is value being added. There's a lot of hard work being done and it's starting to show some results. And I'm going to share just a couple of facts about that with you. Um, as I said, there is much more in the report. First of all, while households and total jobs are steady in the region, um, value is being added below the surface in several key areas. First of all, regional GDP is increasing at pace with national and state GDP. It's up about 2 to 3 percent in 2017, which is the most recent data we have. Um, and if you look at the chart, uh, we're keeping right and pace with the state and the nation in terms of growth in GDP. Median per capita income is steadily increasing, as you can see in this inflation adjusted chart here that tracks each county. Um, and the national is the red dotted line. We're keeping right in pace with per capita income growth over time. The percent of the population age 25 to 54, that's our working population, with a bachelor's degree or higher is increasing. Look at that jump starting in 2016. We're definitely seeing an increase. And if you look, we're well above the average for the state of Ohio. And in fact, Cuyahoga and Summit counties are above the national trend. This is a significant factor uh, in the future of our economy in the region. Uh, we also have data, thanks to CBRE, on patent data. We are seeing an increase in number of patents per capita. We're seeing a lot more uh, research activity happening, and the results of that are starting to show. 
We still have work to do. Jobs are increasing in health and education, as you can see in the right-hand chart here, that yellow line is education and health care. Definitely going up there, it's a strength of the region. Others perhaps are decreasing, information and professional technical, um, and uh, manufacturing certainly, retail trade even, things are slightly decreasing. So there's more work to do there. There's also more work to do in the area of the disparity um, in per capita income and um, um, education and employment between black and uh, uh, people of color, residents uh, and workers of color versus the white population. As Andrew Warren mentioned in his national assessment, um, everybody's wondering when the recession's going to happen, right? We, we know we're on a really long run, and we don't, no one really has any idea when that might happen. Here in Northeast Ohio, we see a slight uptick since 2015 in unemployment rates. That may or may not be a factor. It also could be that the folks who were discouraged and had stopped looking for a job, now that things are picking up a little bit, are getting more encouraged and joining the workforce. And that would also drive the unemployment rate up. So at the moment, we're not sure what's happening, but um, we certainly are, uh, at, at least as far as we can tell, um, tracking the state of Ohio and what's happening here. OK. Other interesting trends, um, as many of us might have suspected and as was reported by the Western Reserve Land Conservancy's Thriving Communities Institute in their recent report, um, housing prices across the region are just about rebounded to pre-recession levels. This is really good news. Uh, we're starting to see value returning to uh, individual homeowners. Um, as their, their housing values are rebounding. Of course, uh, Cleve, the city of Cleveland in particular, the east side of Cleveland, uh, suffered greatly during the recession and the foreclosure crisis and so on. There's still much, much more work to be done there. Um, and they are lagging behind, but we are seeing, again, uh, at least a trending up, which is good news for the region overall. Construction prices is something we, we were only able to get federal data on. And um, as you can see in this chart, um, according to the feds, we in the Midwest, that's the lower blue line, are lagging behind the rest of the country in construction prices. However, we have are hearing anecdotally from folks around the room um, that, and from our committee that construction prices are out of control in this area as well, um, largely due to a number of factors. The difficulty of getting uh, skilled labor is probably the biggest one. Um, tariffs, fires in the West, you name it. There's just a lot of reasons why prices for both labor and materials are going up. Um, we certainly are interested in any ideas uh, you all might have about better sources for next year where we can track the cost of construction more closely to the reality. OK, just a slide or two about each of the major asset classes. Um, and most of this information is, uh, comes directly from CBRE. So again, we thank them for their participation in this project. Couldn't have done it without you, Jack. Um, industrial market continues rapid growth, as we all are suspecting, especially uh, in the southeast sector of the, of the region. Um, vacancy rates are holding healthy at about 4.6%. Um, lease rates, about $4.50, headed down. Uh, sale price, about $43 a square foot. Um, this was for quarter three, 2018. So distribution is the big is the big part of this. Uh, it would be interesting to disaggregate distribution centers versus other types of retail space. Construction is highest and vacancy lowest, as we said, in the southeast. The office market. We're seeing that stabilize. That little blip on the left-hand screen, this is gross sales um, and, and uh, average price per square foot. That, um, 
That blip on the left uh, reflects the sale of Key Tower toward the end of 2016. Um, the office market is stabilizing partly because a lot of the empty office space in downtown Central Business District has been converted to apartments, therefore taking it off the vacancy rolls. Um, vacancies are still somewhat on the high side in the Central Business District, around 20%. In the suburbs, a little lower, around 16 to 17%. Another interesting trend is the co-working space is trending up and this trend is expected to continue and we have more information on that in the report. The retail market, contrary to what some folks might expect with the growth in online sales, still continues strong in the Northeast Ohio region. People still like to go, to, go shopping. Um, we have new deliveries at Van Aken and Pinecrest. Uh, we also have a conversion effect happening with mall conversion in Warrensville Heights and Euclid. Uh, both of those got new uh, Amazon distribution centers, as you all know. Um, that took, took the vacancy rate down some. Um, multifamily expects continued growth with new downtown projects, such as the May Building and Playhouse Square. We have a number of others itemized in the report. Um, and uh, the, another really interesting fact, we're all aware of the millennials getting to the age, and this is, of course, was was a bubble of population that was interested in living downtown, right? The young 18 to 30 year olds. Well, they're all growing up to the point where they're starting families and we're, we're all wondering what's really gonna happen in the long run. We know at least some of them are moving out to the suburbs. However, a point of hope, gener Generation Z, which is coming up behind the millennials, these are the folks who are zero to 19 years old right now, that cohort is almost as big as the millennial cohort. So I think that's a positive sign for multifamily. I think we may see continued demand uh, for rental apartments um, and uh, downtown and urban living, walkable living, um, as that cohort grows into uh, independent lifestyles. Another interesting fact, hotel region-wide had occupancy levels in 2018 that exceeded the RNC in 2016. So the RNC uh, occupancy and almost very low levels of vacancy um, uh, that uh, occurred really has rebounded to that point. Where I think we're starting to see the effects of Cleveland being identified as a place to hold your convention. And so as a result, uh, hotels are doing very well. We do have some new hotels in the works planning coming up in the future, especially in the downtown area, and it will be interesting to watch occupancy rates over the next few years as those come online. Okay, the survey results. This is just a quick summary. We have much more detail in the report. Uh, the idea is to be a counterpoint to the national survey that's done, um, and the national report has the results of that. It also gives us a counterpoint to the data that we've collected. Um, there were uh, 86 respondents online, and as you can see, a really healthy mix of folks from all different backgrounds, whether it be private developer, REIT, lender, brokerage, property management, and so on, builders, government, university. So that's a, that's a good sign that we're hearing from a, a wide uh, um, spectrum of folks in and, or connected to the real estate industry. About a quarter of survey respondents are in a director or management position, uh, which is also good because those are the folks who have the big picture view of what's happening in their business. Survey respondents affirm that their real estate businesses performed well in 2018. About 76% attributed good and excellent profitability with a comparable outlook predicted for 2019. Um, their top concerns, job growth, income, and wage growth, and uh, interest rates as well. Those were their main issues. Behind those, infrastructure, GDP growth, state and local budget problems, and energy prices. And I guess we can add construction prices to that as well at this point. Um, the, the point is that um, um, it's really the larger economic factors that are still uh, issues that we all are working on and should continue to work on uh, in terms of um, their effect on the real estate industry. 
The chart on the right shows over time in the last few surveys uh, the respondents' impressions of what the active sectors are, contrary to what we might expect. Um, office and retail and re rental residential are uh, still seen as the most active sectors. Industrial and distribution is, is getting up there, but still not considered the most important. Um, residential rental, of course, is uh, the one that, that is very visible downtown with all of the apartments being built. The data show basically no increase in sector activity compared to last year's data overall. So the capital markets, and we have more information um, from our panel member um, talking about that, uh, but just to give you an overview, and there is more information in the report as well, almost half of survey respondents note that the capital market's in balance. That's that yellow band or the yellow uh, pie shape in the pie chart here. Another quarter believe it's substantially undersupplied. Um, or I'm sorry, is oversupplied. That's the dark green quarter. And another quarter feel that it's undersupplied. So it's really a sort of a nice broad mix. Most folks feel it's fairly in balance. It was noted in the survey that institutional capital continues to be challenging. And um, they're saying equity sourcing has evolved to accommodate more creative measures. Um, and, and that certainly is true with, uh, we're just seeing an unbelievable amount of creativity in this region uh, from folks who are putting together capital stacks, working collaboratively, a lot of public-private partnerships that are getting projects done that otherwise could not be done. So it's, it's very um, uh, interesting and it's taking a whole lot of energy and hard work on a lot of people's parts. Uh, one survey um, note was that there is a greater focus on out-of-town equity coming in to bridge the financial gap. Maybe there's a perception that there's a little less um, interest and flexibility and engagement on the part of local lenders. However, anecdotally, we're hearing that that's not the case, that local lenders are becoming and are much more engaged than the perception of the uh, survey respondents might lead us to believe. So that's a quick overview of what's in the report. I encourage you all to have a look at it and to get us your comments. Uh, this was a first time through for incorporating data into the report in this way, and we would love to improve upon it next year. So thank you very much, and uh, I hope you all um, uh, enjoy having a chance to look at both the national report and the local report and uh, give us your thoughts for next year. Thank you.